Hello, I am Dr. Shridhar Tomani, Consultant Interventional Cardiologist at RN Tagore Hospital, Mukundapur, Kolkata. Today, I will be discussing about a very interesting and important topic that is pacemakers. I will be discussing about certain facts regarding pacemakers and I will also discuss about certain myths regarding pacemakers. Now, to know or to understand why do we need a pacemaker or what does a pacemaker do to our heart, we need to know in a little bit about the conducting system of the heart. Our heart, although it is a muscular organ, it has certain specialized connective connecting tissues which conducts electrical activity within itself. So I will show you in nutshell about the conducting system of the heart. Suppose this is our heart with four chambers. Here there is a specialized tissue called sinoatrial node. Here there is a specialized tissue called atrioventricular node. So you need not know the nomenclatures but you have to understand that from here to here an electric current flows an electrical activity flows and from here it spreads along these pathways to both sides of the heart that is the main pumping chambers this is the left ventricle this is the right ventricle both of them simultaneously contract like this why do they contract because of this electrical activity now whenever there is a disease in this part that is sick sinus syndrome we call it sick sinus syndrome or there can be a disease in this part that is av block av block or sick sinus syndrome we call it or there is a conduction disturbance in these parts in these branches in conducting tissues so there can be lbbb left bundle branch block there can be RBBB, right bundle branch block. So there are different terminologies. So I just want to un make you understand that these are the specialized tissues which is conducting some electrical current in every bit. And as a result, our heart is beating 70 to 80 times per minute on an average. We consider 60 bits per minute to 100 bits per minute as the normal range more than 100 or less than 60 is abnormal now whenever there is a disease of this six i i mean sinus node or the av node the heart rate may fall sometimes the heart rate may go to 40 or less than 40. sometimes the heart may take a long pause during beating suppose the heart is beating like this every second and suddenly for two to three seconds or even more than that the heart is not beating again it starts to beat so in that intervening period of three seconds or four seconds or even longer in some patients the brain is not getting any blood supply because unless the heart is pumping the blood cannot go to the brain and brain cannot withstand lack of blood supply even for two to three seconds so the cutoff we consider is more than 2.5 seconds or more than three seconds so if there is a pause of more than three seconds we will faint the brain will not function patient will get unconscious so these are certain situations where the heart rate is getting very low if the heart rate is suppose less than 40 the patient will not be able to maintain his or her normal activities the patient will feel weak the patient will feel shortness of breath while working so these are the situations where we need a pacemaker if the heart is taking a pause for more than 3 seconds or 2.5 seconds, we need a pacemaker. Sometimes this left bundle branch block or right bundle branch block, they hamper the pumping activity of the heart. There also we may need a pacemaker. So basically, what is the main symptom which brings the patient to us? That is unconsciousness or fainting attack or sometimes pre-syncope, blackouts, giddiness. The patient may not completely faint, but while walking, while doing some activities, the patient may feel giddy, dizziness sort of, some blackouts, they complain, they say that uh, everything in front of me uh, got black, darkened out, and then gradually I came back to my senses. 
So these are the typical symptoms. Sometimes they do not complain of fainting attacks. Sometimes we find these abnormalities in routine ECGs. We find these abnormalities in routine halter monitoring. And there also you need a pacemaker because this unconsciousness is unpredictable. You never know when it will happen. Patients tell us that I got unconscious one month back and then nothing happened or six months back and then nothing happened. So why will I put a pacemaker? This is because you may continue to do your activities for another few months or few years, but you can suddenly get unconscious any time in the future. So you should not wait that when I will again become unconscious and then only I put in a pacemaker. It is like your the brake of your car is failing. So you should not wait for the brake fail to occur and an accident to occur. You have to repair it before the accident occurs. Because once a patient gets unconscious, there is every possibility of having a head injury, having an intracranial hemorrhage, or the patient may fall down from the staircase while coming downstairs. The patient may fall in front of uh, fire or while taking a bath in a pond in the village people in the su uh, suburban areas often if the patient get unconscious there can be a drowning incident the patient while crossing the road if for a fraction of second also the patient gets unconscious he can be hit and run by a car so these are certain dreadful situations so that is why whenever we find this low heart rate we find these uh, blocks or pauses in the halter monitor or lbbb we ask them to do a pacemaker now what is a pacemaker now if this is the heart suppose this is the person standing this is the face just a rough drawing so here we make a small skin incision in below the below the uh, this left shoulder and that is almost a one inch incision maximum and they are in under the skin we put in a machine like this like the dial of a clock it is the size of the watch dial so from here we connect a wire through the veins into this chamber and uh, electric current is generated from here and it gives the electric current to the ventricle some this is a single chamber pacemaker in case of double chamber pacemaker we have another wire giving electric current to this portion of the heart in crtds or advanced pacemaker we have a third wire going to this side of the heart so why do we need one one wire or two wires or three wires those are uh, I mean a bit uh, higher level discussion for uh, for the common people uh, that may be discussed with the patient once they visit us with some problem. But for now for the time being we will discuss that pa pacemakers can be single chamber, double chamber or advanced pacemakers like AICDs or CRTDs. Some of the pacemakers have the ability to give shock, electric shock which you see in TV programs or some serials or films that we give shock when a cardiac uh, uh, critical arrhythmias occur. So uh, that is also possible in advanced pacemakers which we call AICD. Now the thing is this pacemaker surgery is a very minor surgery that is to be remembered. We do not need general anesthesia. We do not make the patient fully unconscious. We do not have a open heart procedure. We just cut the skin and subcutaneous tissue by one inch hardly. And this is this hardly takes half an hour to one hour in expert hands and expert centers. The complication rate is even less than 1%. It, it, although it is not zero, but it is very less. Usually complication do not occur in pacemakers. And after the pacemaker, the patient can lead perfectly normal and healthy life. Now this is the part where I will discuss about the myths regarding pacemakers. Almost 100% of my pacemaker patients, they tell me certain about certain myths. That is why I thought to bring these points or these issues in front of you. They ask us whether I will be able to touch a electric switch after pacemaker. They ask us while, why, I mean, whether we will be able to use a mobile phone. We may pass through the magnetic uh, corridors in the airports and uh, other areas. Whether we can travel via plane or whether uh, during lightning, during storms and thunders and lightning, uh, what to do, whether we should somebody even tell us that whether we should hide into some underneath places. So these are certain peculiar myths about pacemakers. 
in a simple single sentence i will tell you that nothing of all this is true the only thing only restriction is life is you should avoid lifting weight in the left hand more than three to four kgs i implant my my i mean in my patients i implant it on the left side so that most of my patients are right handed person so they can do everything on their right hand with their right hand and on the left hand we do not uh, i mean allow them to lift more than three to four kgs so they cannot lift lift a heavy trolley bag or something like that in left hand otherwise the person can do anything they can touch the electric switch they can use mobile phone keep it on the left side of the pocket they can lie on bed turning on the same side left side they can lie on the bed prone uh, in a prone position so they can be completely safe in lightning or thunder or storms and uh, they can pass through magnetic corridors so those are uh, those are absolutely myths that is nothing to do yes you have to avoid direct trauma to, to that area suppose a person is hitting you in that over that pacemaker area that may be dangerous obviously but otherwise it is it is not usually a problem and many a times we use screwing leads that is even safer we screw the lead the wire into the musculature of the heart so there is no chance of or very little chance of displacement so you should not believe or you should not discuss this false facts or myths regarding pacemakers and uh, i mean you should not be afraid over these uh, over these false things so it is a minor procedure it is a life saving procedure and uh, it does not bring any restriction to your normal daily activities that is most important uh, and uh, the regarding the battery many a times patient ask us usually once a pacemaker is implanted it goes on for the next whole life and the battery may be need to replace the battery maybe after 10 or 15 years the battery may uh, deplete off and then you have to replace the battery and uh, I mean, sometimes we continue one or two medicines, medications, and many a times the patient is free of medications as well if he is not suffering from any other comorbidities. So uh, I I don't think that pacemaker is something to be uh, afraid of. Uh, if you have fainting attacks, if you have a low heart rate, please do visit your cardiologist. If you need a pacemaker please do implant it and if you have any further queries you can post in the comment section below and i will reply uh, regarding any further uh, detailed queries about pacemakers so thank you be healthy